Hi, Dr. Jeffrey Feiner, board certified plastic and reconstructive surgeon here in Central Florida. And today we're going to be talking about one of the most commonly asked questions that we get in our office is about surgical drains. Drains are a very vital, important part of plastic surgery because we're often doing operations where we're creating potential spaces in the body. And the body's reactions tend to fill those areas with fluid, particularly when there's inflammation. So if you fall and you scrape your knee, and you notice that there's some fluid that kind of weeps from that area, that's what happens when we make big surgical incisions like during a tummy tuck or a breast reduction. And in those situations, we want that extra fluid to be removed from the body. We don't want to leave that there because that can cause some problems with healing. So drains are used to try to evacuate that fluid and allow for the body to heal that space down without having a collection. They're very commonly used. They're temporary. They don't stay in permanently. And this is one of the examples of the drains that we use most commonly. So this is called a Blake drain, and it's a round drain. It has a silastic tubing, and the tubing is hollow. It allows fluid to come out of the body. At the end of the drain, there is a portion where there are what's called flutes, or little channels. And these little channels allow fluid to get sucked up by capillary action, so they get pulled into the drain. And then the drain creates a suction, which actually pulls that fluid out to the main body, which is this hollow tube right here. And eventually it collects into the drain bulb. And the bulb is the part that the patients get to deal with and keep track of what's coming out. So drains are very common. They're often uh, used in a lot of the surgeries that we do. Um, the drains that I like to use don't have a hub or a transition between the tubing and the part that has the flutes. It's actually a smooth transition. And the reason I like to use that is that it does not hurt when it's removed. And a lot of people hear horror stories about drains being removed and how painful they are. That's typically the drains that are flat, that have a little bit of a hub here because that hub will typically stretch the skin as it's being pulled out and it's very painful. The drains that I use do not have that. And when they slide out, they're not uncomfortable at all. It just feels strange as the drain slides out, but it's not painful to take them out. So it's really important to understand that. The operation of the drain is very simple. In the operating room, when we place it, we use a little metal device like this, which is attached to the end of the drain. And that actually gets passed through the skin. It has a little sharp spike on the end of it that allows us to pass it. And that keeps the opening that the drain comes out very small so that the drain actually seals around with the skin that's surrounding it. Once the drain is passed through, we then use a suture or a stitch to secure it to the skin so that it can't accidentally get pulled out. Now this stitch is small, and if you pull hard enough, you could potentially rip or dislodge the drain, but it does take a lot of force. And I've seen it a few times in practice, and it's pretty rare and pretty uncommon. If the drain comes out, it's important to give us a call, not to panic. Um, if it does come out, we typically just remove it because you can't put it back in. It's sterile on the inside. The way the drain works is very simple. It's hooked up to these little bulbs, which are sometimes referred to as a grenade, or a little, uh, it's called a bulb for the drain. The bulb has small gradations on the side that have little numbers. That number refers to the volume, so it measures how much fluid is actually in the drain. It's important to keep track of that when you're emptying the drain because that fluid will dictate when we remove the drain. So once the fluid gets below a certain point, everybody has a different threshold. That's how we make the decision for when the drain gets pulled out. The best way to record the amount of fluid is to take the drain off suction so that the bulb expands and that gives you the most accurate collection. It doesn't have to be down to the nearest milliliter, it just has to be relative and close so we have an idea of how much is coming out. So at home, the way the patients care for these is that the drain needs to be charged and charging creates a suction. And the way that's done is that you remove the little cap here and you squeeze the drain and that squeezing will compress and take all the air out and then you replace the cap. So when that's done, the drain will be creating suction. The recoil of the bulb itself creates a suction force. So when the drain is charged, it'll look something like this, and that is the appropriate way to do it. So that when I release it, I'm actually clamping the drain here to create suction. When I release this, you can hear it pulling air, because it's not hooked up to anything, but you can hear it pulling air into the bulb, and that's how the drain works. So that suction that's created by the elastic recoil of the bulb is what actually pulls the fluid out of the body and into this collection canister. Then what the patients do at home is that they record the amount of fluid that's in here once the bulb is fully expanded and they open that same little collection port that I showed you and then you just dump that fluid out. You can dump it in the toilet, uh, preferably
preferably, uh, or the sink, and then you squeeze it and recap it. And that's what creates that suction. Now, troubleshooting of the drains is a question we get quite frequently. The most, prob the most common problem or the most common issue with drains is clogging of the drain. So sometimes some of the clot material that's in the body or even some of the fat can actually clog up some of the vents or the flutes that are on this tube. And the way we fix that is by pinching the drain near the body and then we pinch downstream from that and we slide. And that'll create a little mini suction in the tubing and when you release that upper one, that suction can sometimes be enough to dislodge the clot and pull it out. It's important to be mindful of what's coming out of the drains because clogs can be indications that fluid's building up on the inside. Um, and the other indication of that is that sometimes you'll notice that there's fluid leaking around the drain itself. So it leaks from around the body site where the drain's coming in and will actually leak around the drain. If that's happening, that's a sign that there's a clog because that fluid's trying to get out. It's not able to get out through the drain. In that situation, you wanna strip the drain as I showed you. You wanna pinch it and you wanna slide away from that area that you're pinching to create that suction and then release it to hopefully try to break up that clot to get it out. If you're not able to do that and give us a call and come in the office, we'd be happy to see you. These drains stay in for a short period of time. They don't need to be cleaned. I've seen some patients remove the drain to try to clean it. It's really not necessary. Inside the drain itself, if you look up near the top of the drain, you see this little white piece that white piece is a one-way valve, so that allows fluid to come into the bulb, but you can't push anything back. So if this is full and you were to try to squeeze it, or even now if I try to squeeze it, I can't push any air backwards because that little white valve prevents anything from going back. And that's important because that keeps you from accidentally pushing unsterile or dirty uh, fluid that's collected here back into the body. It only comes out, it's a one-way valve. Um, if this gets disconnected or if it comes off, if the tubing comes off, it's very simple. It just slides back onto this little piece here that's got ridges that hold it in place and you just slide it all the way down and you can replace it very simply. It comes back on. If it's too long, you can actually shorten it. You can cut out a piece of this and then replace it on if you need to shorten it if the drain's too long. So that's typically our drains. Um, we get a lot of questions about these. If you have any other questions, you can always feel free to call our office and we can be reached at 407-349-8500 or at info, I-N-F-O, at finerplasticsurgery.com. Thank you.